Hi there guys, this is Mike here again coming back with a second video. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for everybody in the model railroading community uh, who posted very, very positive comments and some very positive feedback on the DC wiring video. Um, in this video, I'm just going to break down something that um, I know a lot of people were having trouble grasping, incorporating into their layouts with the DC wiring specific, uh, which is turnouts uh, or switches. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it in my layout and how it can be applied to your layout. You don't have to do it this way. I know some magazines will show it otherwise, but this is the way I've done it, and my whole layout uh, is wired this way and functions properly this way. So before, I'm going to do it in two stages. I have drawn basically a very, very basic uh, wiring diagram here from my layout, and the way that I've done it is I've labeled it for all instructive purposes only block one block two moving over to where the mountains are going to bleed B I should say is block three and over here heading to the the switching yard is block four now to kind of get a grasp of what we're looking at here the line going underneath the tunnel here is block three as you can see in the diagram, the far track here, this one here is block one, this is block two, and then going up, this line here is block four. Now you can see my stickers are different from this, just don't pay attention to that. That's for the wiring layout that I have right now. For, to show you what I mean for wiring switches, this will be completely different. So what I've done um, to wire a turnout is I've incorporated the wiring of a block into the turnout itself and basically what this means is you isolate your blocks but you include the turnout into at least one of them so for example if you notice here starting from the top I have these red boxes here which I'll kinda of zoom in on these red boxes here are all insulated rail joiners so from where this red arrow is on my diagram is the starting of a block. So this is block three and it goes all the way around through the mountains and it actually goes into the turnout and the turnout exits I've put an insulated royal joiner here and an insulated royal joiner here. Now I'm using insulated turnouts. The one thing I forgot to mention so I'm gonna put another insulated memento right there. So that's just basically saying that this is an insulated turnout. Um, but I've done two things here. I put one here and I've put one here and I've used insulated turnouts. So now what that has done is it's created a block one over here and a block two that's over here. But electricity can flow in this block all the way around into the turnout until it reaches these two points that are right here. Now why this works very effectively is once you have your selector switch set to what block you want to go from, like obviously you're going to have to have block 3 here set to cab 1, let's say, and we'll run power and we want to go to block 1, you'll have the cab selector switch set to that. So power from the common rail, which is this bottom rail right here, is going to flow up into here and as you can see the common rail remains consistent and through but the power over here is coming from that block selector switch so it's an even flow of electricity coming up and in and then you switch block three off because you're not going to be using that unless you are and you're using the whole layout with one locomotive that's fine but as you can see, it prevents you from doing overwiring. And what I mean by this is how and why I've incorporated it into my layout is if you isolate too many turnouts on their own, you're creating the turnout into its own power grid. And I thought this would be easier to explain by showing you using this diagram. I've already isolated block one here and block two here from the turnout, as you can see. But it's still incorporated into block three. If you were to put an insulated rail joiner here, right after the turnout, you basically have to draw a line right here. 
because now you've isolated the turnout all on its own from your model railroad. Now this is the pain in the ass part of wiring. You now have to electrify this rail. You now have to electrify this rail. There's so much more wiring involved if you completely isolate a turnout. I found that with my layout, I was able to just keep a single block powered, incorporate the turnout from it, and at least keep the blocks separate from them. This way it's a clean, easy wiring job. It's also clean and easy for power transfer, and it works. Power comes up, comes through into block one, flick your switch, go to your next block, and so on and so forth. Remember, if you isolate the turnout all on its own, you're going to have to power it all on its own. And that's what I have done by taking out this insulated rail gap right here, is you have, have now power going right up to whatever block you want to conjoin it to. Now I know that this isn't going to be possible for all complex model railroads, but it does work for mine. Um, and I'll kind of go through what I've done is I've here in this turnout, as you can see, on the rail joiners right here, there's no insulated rail gaps. It's clean, consistent power up until it reaches these two blocks. And there's an insulated joiner here, and there's an insulated joiner here. So now here, following my finger, this is one block. Following my finger again, this is another block, and I have them labeled as such until it meets the next turnout. And then so on and so forth, going all the way around the model railroad. I've incorporated that even into my yard work, where block 8 over here is powered, powered, powered. And it's powered all the way up to this insulated rail joiner. The power is smooth and consistent all the way down until it meets this insulated rail joiner and this insulated rail joiner. And by doing that, you don't have to have like five mini blocks in one yard. You just have one smooth, consistent one, and then you have individual blocks for each yard member. Um, I find that this way works very efficiently once again. Um, I haven't had any hiccups in my wiring. Um, my locomotives do run very smooth, um, and there hasn't been any wiring hiccups at all. I did take my time with this, um, and just like this, this is your best bet. Go to the drawing board, take the time to draw out your rail plan. Take the time to plan where your insulated rail joiners should be. Take the time to mention and draw out which one is your common rail, which one is going to remain consistent all the way through. So I hope this has shed some light on to wiring a DC wiring turnout. Um, if there's any confusion or if, there, if I've gone too fast on anything, please feel free to email me or to message me on my layout or if there's any questions about it, um, I'm here to help you guys at all means. And in the next video, I'll show you the progress of what I've done here and hopefully solve some problems as well or questions with common rail. Keep on chugging.